Hello fellow tryhards, today we're going to learn how to play the early game in Heroes of the Storm. I'm going to cover both micro and macro aspects of the game so that any player, regardless of their current skill at the time of watching this video, can, with practice, become a Heroes of the Storm master. Let's start by focusing on the big picture. Imagine, if you would for a second, LeBron James, the best basketball player N.A. Let's say that one day LeBron decided to spend the whole game eating hot dogs in the stands instead of playing normally. He probably wouldn't score very much. To that note, you might be the best Heroes of the Storm player in the world, but if you're off in nowhere, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. In order not to end up like fictional LeBron, we're going to talk about where to be on any Heroes of the Storm map in the first few minutes of the game otherwise known as the laning phase. So, where do I go? What do I do? Anyone? <sighs> oh, thanks God. How do I know what a lane is? Okay, so I'm in lane now. Why am I here? What? But why? So if I'm simply standing near dying enemy minions, I will be able to contribute to my team's leveling and getting stronger as a whole? <laughs> Before we move on, let's think through a common misconception about soaking in hots. In this scenario, your team has three people in one lane, and the enemy team has one person in three lanes. Is this an even situation? Hell no! Multiple people can't all soak the same lane, or, put differently, it is the number of lanes that a team is soaking that matters, not the number of people in them. Wow. Do you guys remember when God told you, and I quote, follow these dudes? Well, there's a lot more that you can do with minions than just follow them around. If you kill enemy minions with spells and attacks, this is known as pushing. It's called such because you are pushing your team's minions towards enemy team fortifications. This leads to three wonderful things happening. Firstly, your minions will deal damage to the enemy team's structures. Secondly, pushing drains structure ammo. And thirdly, is the idea of putting your enemy into a lose-lose situation. If a fight breaks out nearby, then our opponent will have to make the choice between getting the experience in the lane and going to the fight. No matter which one they choose, they're going to have to give up something. This is a very powerful move which can gain your team small advantages over the course of a game. Seems great, right? Well, there's a major drawback to pushing as well. Getting ganked. Ganking is what it's called when an opponent comes to your lane from the side or behind you in the attempt to get a KO. Usually, you will already have an opponent in your lane making you significantly outnumbered. Just keep in mind, the further up a lane you push, the more paths your opponents have to you. The easy way to tell if it's safe to push is by looking at your minimap and figuring how close the closest enemy hero that is not in your lane is to you. Let's say you do push though, and then you see the enemy is coming for you. Run, Boris, run! Yeah. What she said. Just remember that dying is the worst thing you can do in Heroes of the Storm. So be careful about how far you push. And now for something completely different. We have now arrived on our tour of the Nexus at the home of Walter Lane. Here Walter spends his days fishing and living by the three holy tenets of laning. Walter, would you care to tell us what these tenets are? Yeah, certainly, brah. The first tenet, thou shalt not die like ever. The second tenet, thou shalt maintain high HP, lest thou risk dying in an upcoming fight or skirmish, brah. And the, uh, third tenet, Walter? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, third. Uh, the third tenet, Thou shalt only engage thy radical enemy if thou does not break with tenets one and two. That was very enlightening. Thank you, Walter. Now back to you in the studio, Mad Buddha. 
Thank you, David. The three holy tenets of laning should always be observed. And I bet he catches plenty of fish. Speaking of fish and laning, something else we need to talk about are our healing fountains. Not only are they full of carp, but knowing when to use them can change your view of the early game entirely. An early healing fountain might mean you won't be able to use it in the first big fight for the map objective. So make sure you use good judgment about whether or not an early healing fountain is a good choice for you. Coming up next, trading. What is it and how is it done? Trading is a simple way we in the MOBA community like to talk about a long fight in small chunks. For example, in boxing, each punch or punch combination by a boxer would be considered trading, and with enough punches over enough time, somebody's going to be hitting the mat. Thinking about trading is very simple. You just ask yourself, what is my character good at? And click the buttons to make that happen. But you also have to ask, what is their character good at? And make sure that that doesn't happen. Here is a table of what characters can use to their advantage over other characters. Don't let this table scare you, because for the first time in the whole video, we are going to do something a normal coach would do. Look at some gameplay footage. Here's some gameplay footage of a game I played a few days ago with a friend of mine. This is me here on Kael'thas, one of my mini smurfs. We're going to pause, right? So we know from watching the intro that we always want to go to lane, and when we get to lane, we want to push. But whether or not we can is something entirely different. In order to take a look at whether or not we can, let's look at our mini-map here. We have all these people up here that we can see. And over the next couple seconds, we're going to be able to see their entire team in mid and because I know their entire team is in mid lane I am completely safe to walk up and push this lane in and one of my teammates just died feels bad man I've walked up and pushed this lane in and we keep looking down there at the minimap we're going to see in a moment up oh, somebody's disappearing and it was Tychus right so because we're staring at our minimap we see Tychus disappear now what do we push? Why do we push? Well, if you're paying attention right, we push because it accomplishes three things. The first thing it accomplishes is that there's going to be damage to the structures. We're going to deplete their ammo, right? And all the minions are going to go here in the front and die. And as long as there's nobody from the enemy team around to soak these minions, what's going to end up happening is that we're going to go net positive one wave of soak. So in order to... Sh assure that this happens what I've done here is I've moved up into this choke because I'm going to knock the opponent off of their mount before they can get to lane so by doing this I'm going to effectively ensure that they can't get any of the exp from this minion wave well, let's go ahead and play this out here do to do to do waiting for the guy oh it wasn't Tigers his mouth ale I lied I thought I remembered it being Tychus, forgive me forever. Alright, now, we see, thanks to Lunara's vision, that we're getting ganked. My friend who I was playing with also told me that Butcher was headed down. Because we're getting ganked, one of the things we learned right was that the further up we push, the more paths there are to us, right? These three are all paths that somebody can take to come and gank me. So instead of walking up to deal with the wave and standing very close to the wave, I'm going to stay way back here where it's nice and safe. And you're going to see that happen here. As soon as I change back to the proper thing, select and hit play. Right, I'm not going to walk up and fight two people because this is two versus one. So you can see me standing way back here by the gate where it's nice and safe. Because ganking, we don't want to push up during the gank, right? That's something we talked about. You check and see where the closest enemy who is not in your lane is, and he was right here. He was too close for me to warrant pushing and I don't even miss a single minion so I still get all of the experience while I'm out here all right I'm gonna think I'm gonna try and get a cheeky trade in here get back on my horse nice and safe so until I know where butcher is ah there it is all right so we switch back over the mini map see on the mini map we just got to see butcher arrive here in mid so now we know he's not in my lane and because I know I'm not getting ganked, I can go right back to pushing. So, by watching my mini-map, I know that I am safe to come up here and get my push on. Go right after the wave, boom, I'm going to blow it up, and Malthail eats a bomb. So that was bad by him, but I'll take it. Cheeky auto-attack, feels good. Ooh, 
a failed trade. So this is a perfect time to talk about the third part of the three holy tenets of laning, right? They go in order. So the first and most important thing that we can ever possibly do is stay alive. The second most important thing that we can ever possibly do is maintain high HP because we always want to be ready to fight. And the third is trading. I walked in to get a cheeky auto attack on Kael'thas even though my auto attacks are not very good. And I think I'll put up the little tables of both these characters so you can see what they're good at and what they're bad at. So because I walked in to do something that my character is bad at, I end up not respecting Malthale. I get hit by his little wave and he gets to jump me. Because of that, I end up putting myself in a bad spot and I take some damage that I did not need to take. Now thankfully, I'm good here and I retaliate by using spells, right? What my character is good at. I use my spell, my living bomb, to get some extra damage out there and try for another Q. So I use my spells and because I'm using what I'm actually good at in order to trade the result is much better. And now he's super low health, so I'm going to try and chase him down. I don't think I get the kill. Yeah, I don't get the kill. But you can see how right there, that was a perfect example of the third holy tenet, right? I only trade because I'm staying healthy and I'm staying alive. And because I'm doing those two things, I've forced Malthale out of the lane. And I've traded by using what my character was good at and avoided what he was good at. Now the temple, or temple, excuse me. <laughs> the shrines are about to spawn and I'm in a lane and because I'm in a lane I want to push so right this just comes back to the same things ever you want to push you want to push you want to push always look for if you're getting ganked I'm not getting ganked I go to push I trade as long as it stays in accordance with my things here I go see I'm using my spells and I'm going to avoid his spells because I'm using what I am good at I am going to end up getting a thing I thought I was going to walk to the right feels bad pretty sure I kill him here I predict the juke back. It. But yeah, right. So Malfail, I dodged his wave that came up the side, and I get a free kill. And I only get this kill because I only use spells, right? You didn't see me do attacks. You didn't see me try and do sick jukes or dodges. I just used my spells and avoided his spells, and I end up with a kill. Alright, now that's it for laning, right? That was the first 2 minutes and 30 seconds of the game. And all I did was when I got to lanes... I pushed forwards all the time, as long as it was safe, right? If somebody came to gank me, which we had someone gank, I just stayed safe. You don't need to fight 2v1s. There's no reason to, right? You want to stay alive and you want to stay healthy. Those are the two holy tenets of laning. And then thirdly, once I get into the third holy tenet, but as long as I'm applying with tenets 1 and 2, right? We learned that from Walter. Thank you, Walter. As long as I'm doing that, I get to come up here and I use what I am good at. So in this case, I use spells. Woo! Writing with my <laughs> mouse hand. Sexy, sexy writing right there. Right, I use spells because in my case with Kael'thas, spells are what I'm good at, right? Not every character is going to trade based on spells. A great example of a character who doesn't trade based on spells is Raynor, right? So Raynor has no spells that are really powerful. He has auto attacks. He shoots his gun. So when if I was playing as Raynor, instead of trying to prioritize using my spells, I would have tried to prioritize simply shooting the enemy with my gun. Very simple. This is one of the reasons that they use Raynor for the tutorial is he's so straightforward, right? Same thing with uh, Tychus here. So really think about what your character is good at when you go to trade. That's all there is to the laning phase. This video was sponsored by Nihilism Gaming. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe and throw it a like. If you don't, then dislike it and give me a comment on what I can improve for the next video. This has been Mad Buddha. Until next time, keep your tryhard pants on. Peace!